Welcome to the One Hero Podcast, where we answer Malaysians' burning questions about personal finance with fact-based answers. Welcome back to the One Hero Podcast. In our previous episode of Financial Audit, we walked Salin through the process of sourcing market information for a company. This is very useful if you're deciding if you want to invest in a company or not. If you're interested in the topic, I've included the link in the description below. In today's episode, we're going to take Salin one step further into the investing world by doing a live case study on two companies, how to analyze these companies to decide if she should invest in them. So welcome back to the show, Salin. Have you ever done any kind of company analysis before for stock investing? Uh, for stock investing, no, for assignment, yes. What was the company assignment? What was the assignment company actually? The, the company assignment? Uh, previously, got we got a lot of assignments, so we took a few. But the one that I most remember is Maybank because for a few semester we keep using Maybank. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> and then it's a it's a how do I say it? it's a very venerable brand. It's a very well known brand now, so it's yeah. also easy for people, right? Right. Uh, maybe we can even do three if you're fast. We can even do three. Um. You have you heard of ping pong biscuits? Ping pong pia? Cream cracker. Uh huh. The the cream cracker, the square one. Yeah, yeah. The the company is actually listed, you know. Oh, really? Yes. Yes. Uh it's a biscuit company. Uh, it's called Hub Seng. Ah, uh, this yeah. one I know. Uh Hub Seng. Yeah, it's actually a listed company. So we'll see. We can we can go through that also if we're <laughs> fast. Okay. So um in the previous episode. There were four questions that I normally use as a checklist. Do you remember them, Salin? Maybe you can share with us instead of Louis reading it out now. <laughs> <laughs> what what they do? What the what is the business and uh, how do they make money? Okay. Uh, the second one is whether they are profitable. Third one is the audience, and lastly is how cheap they go. Yeah, is how it? cheap or expensive they are based on a valuation yeah. ratio. Okay. So uh, just to add on, first question, correct? What business do they do? How do they make money? Second is, are they profitable and financially stable doing that? You missed that part. Oh. Maybe you want to take that. Why I say financially stable? They may be profitable, but they're actually borrowing a lot of money to keep the business alive. So that means uh, they're buying, they're expanding, building. Like I give you an example. I don't know whether they have it in, uh, in Penang, but in KL, there's a very famous restaurant called Grand Imperial. I don't know if they have it in Penang. I heard of the name before. Ah, Grand I've Imperial Restaurant. Very, very, it's a Chinese, very atas Chinese restaurant, okay? Before COVID, they were expanding like mad. They were making money, making profit. But they were expanding like mad by borrowing a lot of money. Okay? And during COVID, business closed, right? Uh, in the end, the guy who saved them or bought them out is this uh, restaurant called Esquire Kitchen. I don't know if you've heard of them. Yeah, it's a very small. It's like if you look at the branches, right? They probably only have like, if I remember, five or six, as I recall. I may be wrong. And this small company, because they were very conservative, they save a lot of cash. They go and buy a big brother who had expanded crazily and then borrowed a lot of money. And so instead of just looking at profitability, we need to look at the financial stability of the company also. Okay, so we will look at the balance sheet and all that as an accountant. Yeah, it should be easier for you, but let's <laughs> take it through as if we don't know our accounts and everything. Uh, the third question is correct. Who's the audience? How big can they grow? How big can they grow? Who's the audience? Current audience and how big can they grow? Last but not least, are they cheap or expensive? Okay, so which one do you want to follow? Instead of Maybank, why don't we do a, a company that most Malaysians have gotten to be familiar with? Farm Fresh. Okay, it's part of your watch list also, right? Louis, is there farm fresh milk in uh, Miri? Ah? Miri, Miri, yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Are they getting nice uh, shelf space, eye level, shelf or is it below or level. above? Mm -hmm. So I, I've been to a few um, like supermarkets that uh, supply this brand, farm fresh. So in 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 one of them, they actually have a fridge. Oh, dedicated fridge. feed for farm fresh. Uh, used to be, but like. For some reason, now there are other brands inside as well, but they, they are at the eye level in, in the fridge. Yeah, for that particular supermarket, but others, not, not, no. Uh, just like at the 
like lower, like lower body. Ah, yeah. lower. Okay. Not okay. Eye level. Yeah. In Malaysia, you pay premium to get there, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, I think yeah. it's 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 not only in Malaysia, right? Uh, certain places like Thailand, well. I found it's not. Oh yeah, I, I was surprised. I thought that it, it is applicable anywhere in the world. I was featuring okay. a Kwachi company in Thailand. Okay. Uh and I visited their stores in Bangkok. I apparently know. The ones oh. that pay premium, they have uh -huh. a dedicated like a like a booth. Uh. Like a like a not, not like a, our booth where you man, it's like a booth within the sh the shelf. So like at the mm. end of the shelf, long shelf, mm. you have like a special column where you just put mm. that mm. right. Mm. Oh. Ah, so it's very interesting actually. Mm. Is this? Uh, I think I don't know whether Salin or yourself has it. Sunflower seeds. Yeah. The the brand is called Cha Cha. Yeah, yeah. Not very familiar. Ah, 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 ah. I always ah. buy it, that brand. Yeah. Ah, it, it just listed on in the oh, Malaysian Exchange listed. actually. So uh, there's actually a video on my channel where we we actually flew into Thailand. I brought the whole video. Pro obviously, we paid. We brought a whole video production crew, created a, vi a very nice video, uh, virtually like a mini mini docu series uh, about them. Uh. Yeah, 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 yeah. But coming back to Fun Fresh, um, okay, let's try to answer this few. Oh, we wanted to cover Nestle also, right? Okay, 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 okay. So, so you can see John is very ambitious today. <laughs> <laughs> We're not gonna go like deep, 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 deep. But deep enough that you know um you get quite a good picture about the business but at the same time uh, i want i want to give different varieties of industries because banks in itself actually there's a lot deeper they like like things you should access are things like credit risk assessment what is the loan quality what do, what do i mean by that like a lot of people say um have you taken a loan before salin no no louis i'm pretty sure you've taken loans before right uh, yeah, yeah, I have. Car yeah. loans or whatever, yeah. like housing loans, whatever. Only, only had, car loan. Car only loan. Car. Uh. I don't know if you heard from your friends, both of you, that if you go to public bank, it's very hard to get a loan. But once you go to guys like other banks, like RHB, whatever, it's easier. You never heard of this, is it? No. Um, Me, me uh, it's, it's a bit different because of my... Your relationship with public bank. Yeah, also yeah, yeah. my mom always told me Understand. it's the easiest bank because Understand. of that relationship. <laughs> but I thought it's, it's, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, it's public bank is one of the strictest because why they want only people that they know will pay back their money. Oh, I see. Okay. Then yeah. for yes. the other banks to want to lend, for them to gain market share, obviously all this is very subjective, lah, right? But if you don't believe me, you go and ask your 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 guys, uh, your, the more senior people who have taken loans before. You go to public bank, cannot get a loan. You go to RHB, CME, maybe they give you a loan. So what happens is, in I'm being very uh, 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 um, generalistic about it, but the quality of the loans are also very important because it's the it's risk assessment, ma. It's not yeah. just hard numbers, you know. It's about the behavior of the guy, whether he wants to pay or don't want to pay. It's not just, oh, I look at your salary slip. This guy earns this much, he's going to pay me. No, this, this guy, the, the banks have to assess your credit worthiness and the behavior. Have these guys paid before? Like Louis, because your mom was a client yeah. and she's been that one, right? So she's built a relationship with the bank. Mm -hmm. So it's not just about how much money she makes. It's about the, the, the dependability of the bank receiving that loan payment from you mm, mm. yeah i think I, I i found with with public bank you always need to have like a this relationship thing correct correct yeah. correct yeah yeah so but if you want to shop for rates you want to get e easier and then you have to go to the other banks huh? yeah mm. yeah yeah so saline when you go to uh when you're going to about to take a loan don't don't be afraid to shop around mm -hmm. It means if you get car loan, right? You want to buy a new car, you get a car loan. You ask the car guy, hey, give me all the best rates. Then you need go. Lah. A lot of people just take it at face value, but you have a right as a customer to get the best, actually. And then if you uh, don't have bad credit card debts, don't have that one, right? That's why it's important for you to build your credit score. Credit score to say that every time you take a loan, you're, uh, uh, you can be trusted to pay back. And you actually get lower interest rates because of that. 
Oh. Okay, I know we haven't, I know it's a digression, but like if you have a good credit score and you have a very long banking relationship, uh, the moment you call, uh, uh, the, the banks actually call you, hey, do you want a loan or a special interest rate? No, serious, 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 serious. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, that, that always happens, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially if you're a good paymaster, okay? Now, coming back to FarmFresh. So where were the sources of information that we we we, we talked about, Salin? Bursa. Bursa, fantastic. So let's go Bursa. And we type Farm Fresh. 5306. Can go and buy bungee already today. Okay, let's search. Let's search for annual report. Okay, they only have one. Okay, because they just listed a few years. No, during COVID, I think. 2020 or 2021, I can't remember. Okay, so this is the first annual report. I only have one. I click on that. There you go. You have part one, part two, and the CG, CG uh, corporate governance report. Okay, now why? Actually, I was surprised. Why don't they consolidate all into one? Apparently, Bursa has a limitation of file size you can upload. Oh, That's called this, this split. <laughs> I like my report all in one because it's easier to control F and search. But anyway, so uh, part one. Question one, what business do they do and how do they make money? So where do you find a good place to start is actually the farm fresh story. In other reports, you can find it's like our business, our core business or chairman's statement, or this section called the management discussion and analysis. Okay, you see here, the first part of the report will already tell you what do they do. So, I mean, even if you don't know how to read English that well, you kind of like guess that they're selling milk already. Yeah. Right? It's the brands, our competitive advantage, group structure. I know this one may be a little bit more confusing. And then they'll tell you our farms. You see, from the primary source of information, uh, Actually, people spend hundreds and thousands every year to come out of the report, but nobody reads them. You know? I don't know if you realize that. I mean, if you are you're preparing, uh, if, if, even if an SME, right, you have to go through the accounts, prepare the accounts so that the auditor can sign off, right? Yeah. You calculate the man hours you spend just to prepare that, but who reads? Nobody. Precisely. <laughs> Here, they go and make my photo, hire production team, make all this, right? But I can tell you, sadly, less than in the investing public alone, let's say even if they're investors, I tell you less than 10% people read it. It's quite sad. It's really quite sad. Yeah. So, okay, here. People don't, read, you, like, people don't read in general. Yeah. 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 So, question one is what business do they do and how do they make money? Uh, obviously, quite clear. Lah. They rear cows, they milk them, and they sell it as a brand called Farm Fresh. That's how they make money. Okay. Question two. Remind me what is question two, Salin. Are they profitable? Okay, good. So in the annual report, and that's why I don't like like part one, part two, you notice it's only up to page 53. So I have to go back here, I have to open part two. <laughs> and usually you have to look for a part where that says, okay, let's go back to the content. Huh? Let me zoom. It says here, financial highlights, page six. Okay, so this gives you a quick financial highlight, which is here. They made 500 million selling milk, yogurt, ice cream, whatever they sold in 2021. Okay, they made a profit of 78 million. And their profit after tax is this one. Yeah, net profit. This is profit before tax. This is their net profit. Okay, now... If you want to get like year-on-year -year comparison, uh, you usually have to go to the detailed financial statement, which is... Okay, let's see. Uh, fire, financial highlight, financial statements. Okay, director's report. Statement of financial position, statement of profit loss, page 135. Okay, Go here, page 135. 68, wow, still very far. 
A lot of people give up already, right? Scrolling. <laughs> okay, financial statements. Okay, here we go. This is the director's report. Why they have to put this up is because they are liable. They have to write up a, a brief about what the, the, the report actually is and then they have to sign off. But we want to look for the financial statements. Okay, so you see here, Usually, statements of financial position is actually the balance sheet. That means they will show you things like their assets and their liabilities. Yeah. So, to the non-accountant trained you know, um, people, you think of assets as the equipment they have, the machinery they have, and the liabilities of things that owe people money. So, like if you took a bank loan to start a business, and then if you took, uh, what do you call it, uh, other people's money as shareholder, that is actually part of equity, okay? And in accounting, what is the accounting equation, Salin? Maybe you can teach the audience. What is the accounting equation? This is basically the company's financial position. They yeah. Are, they are, what's the, they are what's the basic? Asset plus liability equals asset plus, plus equity. Equal no, sorry, liability. Sorry. Liability plus equity equals what? Asset. No? Assets. So I would describe it this way. If you want to start a farm company, a farm fresh company, there's two ways you can raise money to buy assets, right? Yeah. One is you go to shareholders and say, hey, pa, 100K here, ma, another 100K here, and then cousin one, 100K, cousin two, 100K. Okay, that's shareholder equity. You still have to pay back, but you pay back in form of shares, ah. Right? What's the other way, Salin? Take loan. Take loan. You go to the bank, you said, hey, can I borrow? Can. 5% or 15%, whatever. So you plus this together, this money together, you go and buy asset. You go and buy cows, you go and buy factories, you go and buy milking machines, whatever. So that is the basic accounting equation to the, in, to the audience out there. Because I know Salin's accounting trained, so I'm just trying to bring everyone up to speed on what is the accounting equation and why why this is important is because the statement of financial position literally is the accounting equation shareholder equity plus the loans or liability equals the assets of the company and they are always in balance if you look at this your total asset uh, is 1 million 1 billion something something your total equity and liability is 1 billion it always remains in balance that's why they call it the balance sheet. Yeah, last time. Last time, yes. Now it's the <laughs> financial position, okay? Next. The question is, are they profitable and financially stable? Okay? They made sales of 500 million and they made an income, net income, where are you net income? Total comprehensive income is profit for the year. Here, 78 million, 563 thousand three hundred forty six okay yeah there's no million so this is yeah 78 million okay so they made 500 million but they only made they sold 500 million worth of products but they only made 78 million what kind of margins we're we talking about uh uh saline louis mm. let's say oh, you divide oh. uh, 78 78 million divided by 501 about 10% plus. 10% uh. plus, right? I think about 12%, right? Oh, if 10% yeah, would be about 50 million, 12%, I, I'm guessing roughly about 12%, am I correct? About 14% like that. About 14%, okay, fantastic. So are they, they are profitable, okay? But are they financially stable doing that? We go back to the statement of financial position, right? do we look at we look at the liabilities huh? this is all the loans they have right they have liabilities of 399 million and we see here that means this is what they owe the shareholders and this is what they owe the bank sorry this is what they owe the banks okay 399 million what kind of assets do they have they have assets of about 1 billion okay they owe the bank 399 they owe the other shareholders about 700 million 
but the assets they have is about 1 billion. So if today, right, they go bankrupt, they start selling their cows, they start selling their, their factory or whatever, hopefully can raise 1 million to pay back the shareholders and pay back the loan. Yeah. Okay. Now, next question. Who is the audience, guys? Louis, you drink milk, Louis? Um, I don't really drink milk, yeah. Okay. So maybe me lah. I'm an I I do mm. I drink milk, but not as often. Salim? Yeah, not as often. Not as often. Okay. So how do we how do we find out whether uh they have a big audience or not? How many people drink milk in Asia? Oh, okay. Farm fresh market share. Can you see here? Since on corporation, Farm Fresh has become one of Malaysia's largest homegrown dairy, estimated market share of 18%. So it's about one one fifth of the Malaysian market. Lah. Okay. Now, where else do you think I can find this information ah, about market share? Uh, you can calculate yourself. How? That's a financial ratio, if I'm not mistaken. To calculate market share, is it? Of uh, the I think so, or is it the other stuff? <laughs> other stuff. Okay. There's there's one way. Um in the end whenever a company lists, uh they actually have to produce this thing called a prospectus. So in the prospectus, right? In the prospectus, they actually have to tell you the competitors and the market share. Yeah, in the prospectus, if you go here, okay, let me zoom in. You see here, they will tell you business overview, competitive strengths. Uh, they will give you an industry report. Let me see. Uh, overview, competitive strength, da, 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 distribution, seasonality, research, major licenses. Promoters. Ah, industry overview. 188. Okay, page 188. Okay, you see here, independent market research report on the Malaysian integrated dairy industry. So, Frost and Sullivan is a third-party market research consultant Farm Fresh will have to pay Frost and Sullivan to say, hey, in my industry, who are the players? Am I the biggest? Am I the smallest? Am I in between? How much market share is it now? And what's the projected in the future? So listed companies pay independent market researchers like this few hundred thousand to get this kind of report, you know. Again, sad thing, nobody reads. <laughs> People just Google. Obviously, this one you can't find in Google lah, because these are these are all like part of the report, unless Google is smart enough to go and scrape this kind of data, but not. So in here, right, they actually tell you the sales of like yogurt, you know, like you see here. Huh? Retail selected milk product, they will tell you how much. They even tell you like like milk milk industry, how much. Obviously, we wouldn't go into all all, but look at here. They will tell you like who are the players, Nestle, Farm Fresh, uh, Dutch Lady, Etika Milk. Etika, I know you may not have heard of, but in the supermarket, you see Good Day, Good Day, yeah. ah, Etika. Uh, so you see, again, very reliable information, primary source of information. You just have to know where to dig. Yeah. But so then, then just like one, one question is um, like, this is only something they do upon listing, it's not going to get updated every year. Correct, right? correct, correct. And that's wow. where 
that's where understanding of um industry report industry reports you can you can get louis you pay a few thousand us dollars or euros to get those kind of reports so again this mm -hmm. comes back to relation uh your 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 research skills how do you can get this some of this inferred data it you don't need to be accurate but mm. what you want to get is an indication of how big can this market actually grow because why why you need to answer this question because you want to buy a share today 10 years down the road it may be double triple five times the size but how do i know this i have to find information like this oh? is malaysia still continue to drink milk are malaysians switching from like tetare over to milk or tetare has increasing but milk is decreasing you know because obviously you want to buy shares to make money ma. but if you're buying shares today let's say you buy five farm fresh today but people are not drinking milk less and less people are drinking milk what's the possibility or the predictability that your share price is going to go up share price will only go up if the company makes money ma. more money than what they make today ma. yeah i hope i answered your question louis mm, yeah it doesn't yeah. it does not update it's only on the prospectus but it's why i like to refer to them is because ha ah, these were the sources where they got their data the last time can i find updated sources of this so maybe frost and sullivan's website or maybe some other industry uh what do you call it industrial uh organization will actually give you an updated data site you see what i mean yeah mm -hmm. yeah okay so last question are they cheap or expensive so where do I, where do where would you want to go uh salin based on what i showed you in maybank in the previous episode uh let's sleep uh no uh, i mean where would you want to determine whether this stock is cheap or expensive oh need to find uh, the pe ratio google find them <laughs> yeah. so we go um What is the PE ratio? Wow, 47. So you buy Farm Fresh, uh, you get back your money only in 48 years. Uh. Oh. Good or bad? Uh? That's very bad. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, I'm 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 like saying good or bad, but it's again it's subjective. But the longer the, the longer the period, the, the, the crazier it is, all uh, right, the riskier you're taking, not crazier. Okay. It's not as crazy as this company. Nah. <laughs> you buy NVIDIA today, 200 years later, you get back your money. Wow. Is that for your great grandchildren? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that for your great, 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 great grandchildren. Yeah. So, again this is just a rough indication obviously there are many ways to value to determine cheap or expensive but yeah this is this is one example lah. yeah yeah okay i went slower this round for fun fresh to explain but let's do a quick one for nestle and maybe even hub Seng. okay okay so now first question what business are they in okay let's look up Seng biscuits uh, Sorry. For the bursa? Okay, and a report. Okay, let's open this up. Close this. Okay. Open up the report. Ah, straight away, you know. You don't even need words. You see the picture, you know they sell cream cracker. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, a lot of biscuit manufacturer, some of them are list. I know Julie's is not. You know Julie's biscuit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So okay, we know we said they sell biscuits. Okay. First question answered. How do they make money by selling biscuits? Are they profitable? Okay, let's you can actually do the annual report one. Oh, we straight away we go here. Hapseng Industries. Okay. Let's see whether they're financials. Yes, you see here? You've got an income statement. You've got it over. Let's change to annual. 
you've got over the past five years. So they made sale of about 300 million. You see, it's almost flat line. Huh? You, you people don't eat enough biscuits. Huh? That's why their sales cannot grow. Low. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do they make net income? Yes. Net income, 42 million, 2018, 38 million. Well, I think in, I'm self -con uh, health conscious. Uh. Yeah. Actually, biscuits, they say, I mean, again, no pun intended to, to help saying, uh, a lot of people say that uh, the flour concentration in the biscuits, right, is, is actually unhealthy because very, very much processed. Mm. Yeah. I love biscuits. Certain biscuits are not all. Uh, yeah, but, okay, 40 million. COVID, people eat more biscuits because they stay at home, is it? Let me see. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I know I ate a lot of biscuits uh, at that time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> People eat less, uh, Louis. Look at that. Net income. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I, I ate a lot, but apparently yeah, COVID, COVID was a bad thing for them. You see, the sales drop, net income also drop. And then 2022, even less. 27, 26, yeah. Louis, uh, Salin, ask your family to eat more biscuits. Then you buy half Seng shares. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Sales got, profit also got, they're still profitable. But more importantly, we have to look at their balance sheet also, right? So you don't have the balance sheet here. Too bad. Oh, oh, oh. At the bottom there. Eh? Oh, the bottom, eh? You see? Oh, There's yeah, yeah. Right. Right. Ah. Okay, so you see, uh, they have cash of 62 million, asset of 212 million, liability of 71 million. So quite safe, ah, this company. Lah. There's some companies you see, right? Um, ah, I'll give you a company. Yeah. Okay. They have cash of 840 million. They have asset of 12 billion. But they owe people 16 billion. More. Good or bad? Uh? They take more of the fund from. There's a, uh, yeah. There's liabilities, what they owe people is 16 billion. The asset they claim to have is 12 billion. And the cash they have is 840 million. Oh. Comparatively to Hub Seng, they owe people. They owe people 71 million. The assets they have is 212 million and the cash they have is 62 million. It's like, okay, for the lack of a better word, it's like when you look at a company's financial statements, uh, it's like outside the dress, the, the person dressed, the shirt, whatever, very good looking, whatever. This is like peeking underneath the dress for a while. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> for the lack of a better analogy, it's like, whoop. yeah. So, yeah. I, I leave it to judgment. I mean, it's very subjective. I don't want to get into trouble, right, with Sapura. But yeah, this this is how I would look at the financial statements. Huh? Yeah. Making sense? Yes. Okay. So Hop saying, uh, they're profitable, financially stable at doing that. Who is the audience? Obviously, you can go all the way back to their prospectors. Like Louis is asking, uh, is that updated? No, they listed probably about 20 years ago, 30 years ago. So obviously, what was said in a prospectus is not relevant today. <laughs> so most likely we have to say, okay, how much does Hub Seng, uh, how much is Seng's market share of biscuits in Malaysia? Obviously, we may even can we can even try chat GPT uh, <laughs> the next time. <laughs> okay, so if you look at it, there's many places yeah. where we can ask. Uh, obviously, Google is one of the best. But what we try to do is we try to find people in the industry that writes about it. Sometimes it could be a news uh, article. Sometimes it could be a, a report like a Reuters or whatever. You just have to find out. It, there's no direct answer, uh, Salim. It's like you got to find a few different sources. Sometimes it's, it's there. Sometimes it's the other place or whatever. Lah. Okay. Yeah. Last, last but not least question for Hub Seng. The four questions that we ask, are they, what business do they do? How do they make money? Are they profitable and financially stable? The third is who's their audience? What's the last question usually? Uh, 
how cheap or expensive they are. Okay. So PE ratio is 17.6. So that means you buy today, 17 or 18 years from now, you get back your money. Okay la. Okay la. Farm fresh? You remember Farm Fresh one? 47 point something. 47 yeah. point something, right? Uh, 47.9. 48, 48 la. 48 la. Okay. One last company. Nestle? Nestle. Okay. Okay. We start from the bottom up this time. Are they cheap or expensive? Ooh. 50 times <laughs> <laughs> more expensive than farm fresh okay 50 times okay but nestle you would argue la sales farm fresh only sell milk yogurt dairy based product right nestle sells what ice cream la yogurt la milo a la whole range of products Nescafe, whole range of products right okay so cheap or expensive subjective 50 times i feel it's a little bit expensive okay uh bottoms up next question who is the audience how big they can grow Nestle is a global audience. I mean, Milo is sold everywhere around the world. But Nestle Malaysia only sells mainly products to Malaysia. They have some export products like Nescafe out to the Middle East. But yeah, you can go and research how big the Malaysian audience is. Right? Don't need to be super accurate, but you just have to make an educated guess. Do young people today drink my, more Milo or not? Yeah. Is she less and less, you know? Really? Why? Yeah? You think, okay, do you see younger, your cousins or your nephews younger, they drink more Milo or less Milo? Subjective, huh? You think more, huh? Yeah. Which is good. I'm happy. Because <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people, young people, they said too much sugar. Half conscious. Yeah. But I know a lot of people still drink Nescafe, which is good. <laughs> okay. Again, very subjective. Doesn't need to be precisely right or precisely wrong. Okay. Profitable, growing. Let's see. Uh. Uh, where's the finances? Uh? Oui? They don't have a finance this time? Five years. Ah, here you go. Okay. So, net income. 197 let's say 200 million 200 million on a sales of 1.8 billion so you're talking about roughly 10 percent as well 10 to 12 percent okay uh are they financially stable let's look at the balance sheet okay total liabilities 2.93 billion total asset 3.47 billion and then cash in short term about 10 million better than sapura i guess <laughs> <laughs> okay what business do they do i think we've already you know uh mentioned it earlier so salin between hapsang nestle uh we haven't covered maybank but between hapsang nestle and farm fresh uh which one do you think is easier for you to understand hapsang hapsang why because i see this on your pe ratio ah. and that everything is very direct Mm, mm, okay, okay. What do you think are the next steps you should do from here? We need to see the prospect. Mm -hmm. Very good. How big can it grow? Because you don't want to be... Let's look at Hapseng's share price. Huh? Max. Okay, it went from 13 cents. If you bought here, okay lah. <laughs> <laughs> Today what was is that? Like, um, 20... This was, I think, 2006, Louis. Wow, how old was? 11 years old only, right? 11 years old. <laughs> Your father said you like biscuit, we buy shares for you. <laughs> 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 and then we go all the way to one third. I think the peak was here, Louis. 141 in November 2015. And then today is half the price. Ah. Hmm. Yeah, which is very good. What's the prospect? Yeah. Huatai Biscuits is also listed. Uh. You know Huatai? Huatai. So Biscuit. See. Eh? Luxury Cream Crackers. Oh. Uh, I'm very sure you've seen this before, right? 
they also make cream crackers, they also make this kind of biscuit. Also listed, Hatai. Yeah, layer cake. <laughs> layer cake. Okay. So, Louis, any final points that you want to summarize this episode to? I mean, I, I went rapid speed in the last few, few, few companies, but I think the framework is already laid out, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think um, we we also, before this, Arlene, I, I don't know if you follow us, uh, we actually do a, a more in-depth one for other companies. So, um, yeah, I think this is a great um, test for anyone who's just like looking at a company. You know, like Salin, I think, I think, I think um, one of the first things that will happen to you, right, is that when you go out and look at brands, you start to think about if you can invest in them, you know. So, <laughs> like, yeah. So when you see a car, you say, oh, that, that's what happened to me, right? So look at the brand, and I'm like, oh, okay, is that, are they listed? Why are they not listed? Because it, it seems like a good business. So if they're listed, great, then you run these four questions, right? Before, because um, a lot of people, what, what happens is, they just look at the price. You see, like like the farm fresh, it seems like one point two nine seems cheap, but you don't know actually. Like, is it is it worth even one point two nine at this point? And how how expensive is that, right? Yeah, I think when I was your age as well, uh, a lot of my friends simply buy one, uh, simply whack, <laughs> simply whack because they just say, oh, Nestle good. I uh, really, one of my friends actually bought like a whole um a whole lot with all his money, you know, at that time. This is never oh. really. Mm. I, I think at that time it was like 14,000 ringgit all his savings wow. he put on one Nestle lot one lot, lot of Nestle you know so he was like wow this is very good because the way he analyzed was like because everyone drinks uh, Milo it has so many like it will never, not, nothing bad will ever happen to it that's what mm. he, he said like. Understand. but it's a very limited point of view you see so I now understand. John also brings in some stigma, technical parts as well so I think if you run your, you know, any company through this for you'll get a much, much fuller picture. Yeah. Also, I forgot one more thing, uh, Louis, because uh, uh. in the previous episode, we did Maybank, right? I forgot to include this thing called the dividend yield. Uh, yeah. So the dividend yield, what does the dividend yield mean? Is that if you own, let's say today, the share price is 8 ringgit 73 cents, right? You bought, let's say, 1,000 shares of Maybank. So that's... 8,700 ringgit, 8,730 ringgit lah that you've put out, right? On that 1,000 shares, you're getting 6.4% 6 .6 dividend yield. So how I would use this to compare uh, Salin is to your fixed D lah. It means instead of getting fixed D 3%, you buy Maybank, the price go up, you get a lower dividend yield, but your cost, your actual cost is only 8,700 ma. Yeah. So you, at that point when you bought, it's 6.64% yield. If the price goes down, your yield obviously will go higher because dividend yield is calculated like this. It is the uh, dividend divided by the price. I repeat, uh, the dividend divided by the price and then multiply by a percentage. So in this case, I'm getting 6.64. I don't care the price go up or grow, go down. I know at the point when I bought it, it's 8.73%. My yield is 6.64. If the price goes down, my yield is actually higher, you know. Because you just imagine my capital is only 8,700 8, for 1,000 shares. Ma. Yeah. Obviously, if the price goes up, then the dividend yield will be smaller. But my original outlay is only 8,700 ringgit. You get what I mean? So for people, some of them, they want to do dividend investing. This is how they look. Uh. They look at the dividend yield at that point. That's my capital. I'm getting 6.64. So I don't really care whether the price go up or go down. Obviously, if the price goes down, you, technically, if you know and you're confident of the company, you should buy more because they're paying out that they have dividend. Okay. Yeah. So alternative to fixed D is something like this. Uh. Dividend investment. Yes, mm. become a dividend investor. Actually, there's much yeah. more. La. We can talk about REITs in the next round, Louis. Because mm. REITs pay okay. usually higher, higher dividend yields. Uh, but obviously, the growth is not, is, is not as good as a business like this because the underlying for a REIT is actually buildings, uh, rental from buildings. Yeah, it depends on your, your, your interests uh, and your risk right. appetite, all of these things. So right. personally, I also do not like REITs. Uh, but... I mean, like after hearing everything here from John, 
how do you feel about investing now? This is like the third lesson into this uh, Getting more yeah. and more confident because there's wow. different different type of returns. Yeah. And then you know how to read the market now. Mm. And I, I hope think I actually, fire hose you. <laughs> <laughs> actually, your your skills, your skill sets and your interests do match with these kind of things, right? You do like to do analysis of companies, etc. Right. It seems like every time John talks about these things, your, your eyes will light up. You actually really look into the details of everything. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I think something you're already used to doing uh, for other things is just maybe before this, you didn't apply it to investing yet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So probably using... Do you think uh, right now, based on what you have learned up to this point, would you be ready to start analysing your own companies? Maybe, but I still need like guidance. Mm -hmm. just, the, the, just doing that first step, right? Like maybe identifying and just running uh, tr the company through those four questions you think okay right yeah yeah at least more confident less <laughs> risky and now do, do you think like now your world uh in wealth in general creating wealth has opened up a lot more so yes. we started off with you only have money in 60 right yeah. now investing will become a real opportunity for you don't you think Okay, so <laughs> I'm very, very happy to see that. I mean, I didn't even have to ask because um, I see from your face that, you know, you got so excited and you're like, oh, actually, it's not not that hard, not that complicated, not as risky if I know what I'm doing, right? Just like driving a car. If we don't know what we're doing, of course, you know, it's scary, you know, when yeah. we're kids, we get adults do it. Okay, thank you so much, Salin, for your time uh, today, you know recording all these uh, episodes with us. And um, guys, if you want to follow Salin's journey, we'll be continuing this journey. Um, today, uh, we have um, brought, uh, John has taught Salin how to analyze the company, going through three different uh, companies in uh, Bursa. In the next episode, what will we do, John? The REITs? Hmm, maybe REITs. And mm -hmm. uh, maybe we go um, across different other industries. Huh? I mean, I think uh, uh, I'm throwing the ball back into Salin's court now. Uh, your job mm. is to look for companies. Uh, and we go through okay. we go through this, you know, uh, apart from the series that Louis and I go through with uh, different uh, companies around the world, we, we covered NVIDIA. So maybe for you, uh, Salin, you can, you know, look at maybe Malaysian companies and then maybe if you are a little bit more confident, uh, I want you to buy your first share, actually. <laughs> Deposit the money, uh, and then let, let, let's buy the first share, you know. Yeah, yeah sure. So, so, shall, we, shall we give Salin a, a bit of homework then? Maybe during the next call, she can also share with us her own answers before you share yours, John? Definitely, definitely. So, so pick, pick mm -hmm. three companies, Salin, and, you know, um, you show us what uh, you have found from the four questions uh, for, the, for 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 those so that so that the audience can also benefit as well from your research. Okay. Yes, yes. Like I just shown, it's like shouldn't take more than twenty minutes, mm. right? It's very quick. You know, you mm. have uh, you. I've been showing you the tools and resources that you can use. Obviously, if you want to go deeper, there's a lot more. But let's at least get the basics right. Let's get that baby steps started first. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Exciting, exciting journey ahead for Salin. So guys, if you want to follow Salin's journey, make sure to subscribe to our channel. And if you've enjoyed today's episode, give us a like to help with the Google uh, YouTube algorithm. Thanks again for tuning in. See you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.